Scorpio friends and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020 where this month Scorpio it is a busy month up in the heavens it definitely is we've got retrograde activity at its highest at least until we get to September and we've also got eclipses happening this month so it is a busy month but it is a busy month of slow down take your time reassess what needs improvement what needs repair what needs adjustment and where you just need a slowdown it's a beautiful energy this month we've got both venus jupiter and your ruling energy pluto all in retrograde this month this affects love money and your own personal well-being so this is definitely the signal that for the next five months it's okay to breathe drop your shoulders down and let a nice reassessment of these areas of your life just roll on in here to you okay let's jump in and talk about what's going on this month right at the beginning of the month on the second mercury enters into shadow time in the energy of cancer he's slowing down here because he's going to take a retrograde on the 18th but this slowdown time means that you may also start to feel like a slowing down in your ninth house area this is publishing marketing broadcasting faith even your thought process i mean i would wonder for how many of you scorpios it hasn't already been feeling like the slowdown has been on you where it's like oh come on horoscope are you even out there you know what i mean things like that but this will be a continued kind of slowdown to help you rethink the ninth house is our big picture mental house mercury is a mental energy so here your faith, your belief systems, your the things that guide you, the way that you communicate out to people, the things that you're learning, studying, trainings that you need, they'll all become a little bit more emotionally centered because it's in the energy of cancer. But just know that as of the second, things will start to slow down in this particular area. On the fifth, we're going to have a lunar eclipse right next door in the energy of Sagittarius. So this is just next door in the second house for you. Now, this is a full moon lunar eclipse. So the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. In the energy of Sagittarius, it's very big. Things in this area, the money area of your life, the second house, your money, your finances, your budget, the way you use your talents to make money. These things have maybe gotten a little bit off track because Sag is very big. He's not very good at looking at the small details of a situation, but the big picture he's phenomenal at. Now, the ruling planet of Sagittarius is also retrograde at this time. So it is, again, another pointed indication for you that you definitely want to relook over those finances. And and I would also take it to the extent here to say, Scorpio, I mean, we've had COVID going on. That's a real thing out there. So if you've needed to also relook at how you're interacting with your company or your organization, or there's some kind of transition happening there as well, this could be a big change that's coming in value in that particular area as well. But bring it down to a realistic sense. Try and get in track and on track with this particular moon this is going to last six months so you know for the next six months you can have your eyes on your finances making sure you've got it down to the details and you're good as we get out of this transition the other thing that's coming to me very quickly is that um for some of you Scorpios, it may be time to, you may be beginning to get ready to make payments toward college for either yourself or for someone else who's going to college or training or education or something as well. On the 18th, Mercury is going to officially take that retrograde. So it's going to be in the energy of Cancer. So this is going to be retrograding until July 12th, lighting up this ninth house space for you. Publishing, broadcasting, marketing, putting yourself out there in some way, that video on YouTube, the podcast, um, travel. For some of you, some people will be traveling during the season. It's like going back home. We're going back to a philosophy, going back to a practice, going back to a belief system, going back to this place where you meet you. It's a kind of a big energy here, but it's going to be the place where you're trying to review this area. Now, I will tell you, too, for many, many people, you know, some of our nurses out there, they didn't, our new nurses, they did not get to take their national exams because of COVID, right? There are all kinds of organizations who were delayed in their training. So if that's you, this could be the timing over this next handful of months where you're going Going back to it as well on the 20th we see the Sun now entering into the energy of cancer so we know that this area is getting busy the trainings coming back online the faith is coming back online right all of these things have some motion and then we follow that up on the 21st with a new moon solar eclipse happening here 
So this is going to be our indicator of a beginning of something new, but it's almost as if at this particular eclipse, you have to, in this ninth house area, say no to something else, be able to put it down, be willing to put it down so that you can say yes to a fresh start. So just because the opportunity presents itself to you doesn't mean it will present itself to you conveniently. I want you to just be aware of that, especially since this solar eclipse is going to be happening at zero degrees, which is an important degree it tells us there is definitely a beginning on your table right here. If your birthday is the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, even the 20th, this is an important time for you. This is an important piece of your cycle. Something brand new is absolutely coming to completion and absolutely at a beginning as well. On June 23rd, Neptune is going to go retrograde in your fifth house in the energy of Pisces, which is a fellow water energy. So kind of a nice little bonding that you've got going on here. But in the fifth house, what we're looking at is children, creative expression, hobbies, things that bring you joy, things that bring you pleasure. There's a beginning of romance, desire is wrapped up in this particular house. Now, as Neptune is out of retrograde, <clears throat> we kind of have a nice opportunity to daydream just a little bit, you know, and it, it's like it's just a little mini escape and then we can come back into reality. And so it's like we get to take these little jumps. Now, when Neptune goes retrograde, what happens is reality feels woof, like very concrete, like boom, this is reality. A chair looks like a chair, a rock looks like a rock. It's a little bit more of a heavier energy. And what that forces us to do is two things. One, we get very serious and we have to look at things a bit more real in the fifth house area of your life, which actually, because we usually have a little bit of a filter there, it can distort reality a little bit. You're not sure what's true, right? Do I really enjoy this? Or is this just something that I do, right? These could be questions you find yourself asking. Now, what Neptune in retrograde, the other part of that, that it's asking you to do is to envision and to create the ideal of this area of your life. What's your ideal um, level of pleasure? What do you do for fun? What do you do for pleasure, right? What's your ideal relationship with your children? Are you ready to have children? Are you starting to form that ideal? What's this hobby that you love, right? You create the ideal of it as Neptune is retrograde so that as he comes out of retrograde, you can form it in the material reality. And that's the example I always use. Once a chair, before it was even a chair and something material in our reality was this chair, it was just a vision. It was just an idea somebody had and it had to be visioned and then brought into a material reality. So that's what we do during a Neptune retrograde for sure. On the 25th, Venus is going to be coming direct at five degrees of Gemini. She's done her entire retrograde. So you've had a chance to look at your eighth house. Now, at the beginning of the month, we had this lunar eclipse in your second house. Now we've had Venus who's been working on revising, re-editing, reconnecting, re-looking at the value of your eighth house. Both of these have a financial piece to them. The second house is how you make money in your value. The eighth house is where you're connected to money. So I would say during this Venus retrograde, besides just looking at things that had value, you were likely looking at your specifically your finances again or your ties to other people in those connections. You know, are you getting closer to paying off a loan, paying off a debt or something like that? So your money's actually going to free up a little bit. I also think too, as Venus comes direct, this could be a good node for a partner's finance or finances or money that you um, get to take advantage of that you don't necessarily have to earn yourself, but it comes to you, right? It's a joint resource. It's a joint partnership. I do believe that Venus direct in the eighth house as well could bring a romantic opportunity into your life or a financial situation into your life, maybe via collaboration or something like that that you end up doing. But certainly, Venus in Gemini has brought an energy into your life of emotional value intelligence that's very, very useful for you here in this eighth house. So if you saw things during the retrograde that just don't fit, you need to make those adjustments and improvements. As Venus comes direct on this day, Scorpio, you'll be able to put those changes into action, okay? On the 28th, Mars, our action energy planet, and also one of your ruling planets, is going to move into the energy of Aries. So this is going to light up your sixth house. Now, Mars in the sixth house, one of the things I do want to tell you is please make sure you're being active because Mars in the sixth house can actually make you tired. You like have this abundance of energy just rolling through this health. So please be mindful with health 
this particular month in that energy. Instead, what you can use it for is around your health, in your work, in your projects, in your daily routine, in how you show up in service to other people. Trust your instincts. Aries energy trusts their instincts. So what are your instincts guiding you, pushing you, pulling you to, right? Trust that instinctual move because it's likely telling you exactly where you need to shift something in this sixth house area that is going to be to your benefit. But you can know for sure that even if it's like you want to get back to the gym because we've been in quarantine, Mars here in your sixth house is ready to move, ready to move your body, ready to move your health forward for sure. Now, as we end this month on the 30th, Jupiter and Pluto are going to come together again in a conjunction, but this time they're going to hit this conjunction in retrograde. When we saw them before in April, they were both direct. So here in your third house, communication, thinking, contracts, negotiations, that book, whatever it is, you started something new. They helped you drive towards it with a fair amount of desire. And even just to change your mind and start living with a different thought process is a very big deal, but it's as equally a big deal to start writing that book, right? Either way, Jupiter and Pluto gave you a start right here. Now at this particular conjunction, because they're both retrograde, you're going to review it. You're going to go back over that thing, see the adjustments and changes that you need to make. And if you've been frustrated by it, by time, by feeling exhausted, by whatever it is, this energy I love for you this day because it shows you you have an immense capacity to efficiently, effectively be successful and overcome the challenges that are here. They're kind of your no level excuse. It's okay. You've got this. Let's move this area forward. They also continue to show you the value of why you would let go of doing this area the way that you were and why you would develop something new here. Why are you feeling pushed to develop something newer, bigger here? This is your astrological help for the month to review your communication, your thinking, your lesson plans, your relationships with your siblings, definitely any contracts to make sure that they are the very, very best to serve you down at the end of the year because they're going to come together in a conjunction again in November. And at that time, you want to see things really coming to flourishing. All right, Scorpio, it's a busy month. Lunar energy is always something I tell you to pay attention to. Make sure you clear your schedule if you can around the eclipse times. Just give yourself a little bit of a break. You are a water energy as well. So if you can do that, I think it's all the best for you. I look forward to having you guys over to the Eat and Greets. We've got many more astrologers lining up to come visit with us. Rick Levine will be here. I'm hoping to get Stephen Forrest here as well. But Maria Simone, Gemini Brett, they are all on board and coming this way. And many, many, many many more friends will be here as well. So I hope you check it out. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all my love this month, Scorpio, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye.